That was a little closer than 126 as they've gone under that banner. Oh! oh, oh the passive crash there. What has happened? Right oh. on the side of the road there. Look at this. I don't know what happened there. Maybe they clipped the crowd, but whatever has happened, they are in a right mess down there at the moment now. How many riders? Let's hope. That is a massive crash, Bob. It's completely... It was a jumbo Visma ride. It wasn't Roglic, was it? I think that was Tony because Martin. Because the whole... That just went down. It could down. have been Tony Martin. Yes, it could have been. And it just he just ah. hit the side of the road and lost the front wheel. You can see right on the... It looked like pilot Near error. the front. Watch him try to get around his teammate and go down. Oh, he might have clipped that spectator. He went off the road. Oh. I think he went off the road. The road has got a nasty ridge on it there. Now, the question is, what's going to happen? How many people are going to get back up right, out of this? Right, that sign right there, Phil. Left of your picture. Oh, my, oh, my goodness me. Oh, it was the sign that the rider in front hit. And that is the result. And taking down the taking down one of the top teams in the race and somewhere very close to that situation was definitely Primoz Roglic. As you can see, the whole race is stopped here. Well, let's see if they don't neutralize the proceedings while they... Well, I mean, well, that's a massive pileup. Well, let, let's see if Adam Blythe can throw any light on this. Adam, back to you. Or over to you. Yeah, I'm just behind... I'm behind the uh, the crash now, Phil, and it is just like a war has started. There's mechanics coming up with the new bikes, running from the cars. You can just see one coming now. The riders are just blocked across the road. They can't pass anywhere. So it's just like it's like a rugby scrum in rugby. Riders just trying to push their way through and get to the front. I can just see Tony Martin in front of me. He stood up. Wow, Van Aert just in front of him. If you look past his screen when it goes backwards now, there's a very Brent wheel. That's one of the Quebec Arasos riders. His wheel was just in two there, so... That crash has really done a damage. Another rider here, his rear mech hanging off. A Bora Hansgrohe bike, his levers are all bent in. Another Quebec Arasos rider. There is people, mechanics, staff. You can see the, the Movistar car to me just here on the right hand side. They're getting a new wheel off now, a new bike off now. So it's just absolute chaos. Two right, another rider coming up with a spare bike again. There's still riders in front. They look to be getting going, but it is just chaos at the minute. There's photographers in front of me. There's a Swan Year coming up with Bidons, Trek Segafredo going back up. Mark Hershey now is just walking backwards here. You'll see him just walking behind me. Mark Hershey's shaking his hand. Tony Mark Primus Roglic bikes coming up. He looks like he's okay. Another rider here. Look at this bike. That bike's in two. The whole rear mech is hanging off it. Mark Hershey now getting back going. He's got his spare bike. It is chaos. There is riders, bodies, staff everywhere. Well, and it was all the fault, clearly, of a spectator yeah. with a banner in front of the riders, looking, as always, they often do, at the camera rather than the race coming from the other direction. And uh, once one rider went, they completely fell. They were not expecting, of course, to fall in this situation. Look at that bike there, wow. Bob. And that bike's an Ineos bike. No. It's, uh, Le uh, sorry, it's the Umbo bike. No. Lagan's bike. UAE. Lagan. That's yep. Stegard It's Lagan's Lagen, yeah. bike. UAE team. Yep. Snapped in half. He'll get the spare. Norwegian rider. And, this is and the Tony Martin team. was right near the front there. Oh, good. But that... Well... I'm a just, uh, and there's Sepp Kuss there, the American rider, who's expected to be alongside Primoz Roglic when it matters. Uh, Mark, Mark Hershey's bike, we've seen Mark walking. Well, to say that's a shame is an understatement, Bob. This has been a perfect opening day so far. Let's see if we can get any more news from Adam Blythe. Adam? So Tony Martin has just got back on his, back on his bike, and it looked to be Mark Soler from the Movistar team that was sat in the ditch for a bit. He's just got back on his bike now, but there is one, two, three, three mechanics here from Jumbo Visma, four bikes. There's one of them, the rim is snapped in two, so Tony Martin back on his bike. 
it just looked absolute chaos. And I think for the riders and staff now, just to get back in for those riders that are a little bit off the back, you know, they're already here. Another Jumbo Visma bike arriving now. So that's five staff, five bikes. It is mayhem here. Closing yeah, in so on the last. Start. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Phil! Oh, my, what oh no! Happened? Oh, I oh cannot believe God. what we are seeing. What on earth has happened? The whole field is somersaulted down. We'll have to have a look at that again, obviously. But a lot of riders this time look a little bit stunned, to say the least. And I think Van der Poel is in that again. It's happened in the centre of the peloton. This is absolutely unthinkable. On a straight road, seemingly no problems at all. What's the centre of your picture? Right at the front looks over and he's heard the touch of metal. A rider's gone down right in the middle and taken out the whole peloton here. That is unbelievable. And I don't think anybody can take the blame for that except the race itself. Chris Froome, it looks like, in the Chris blue Froome, and white. Oh, dear. Yeah. oh, Chris Froome comes back to the Tour de France after two years out. But, the, well, now we're sorting everybody out on the road for the second time in less than an hour. And there's Andre Greipel. Back in the tour and a big sprinter, not for today's stage, but day three was for him, possibly. This has totally disrupted the situation. I'm just trying to see if we can see 101 down there, and we can. Is that 101 or 107? 107. I think Van der Poel may have got away with this. Let's hope so. The race has gone on. The, the, the race is not going to wait this time, Bob. They are driving here. And look at the size of the peloton. Maybe 40, 45 riders. That's all that's left. And they're going for the finish and they're going flat out. And I don't know which one of the favourites at this moment has been delayed by that crash. Julian Alaphilippe has his teammates on the front. So presumably he is still there and looking for a win. Alpacine Phoenix in the purple and yellow jerseys have vanished from the front of the field. So it looks like Matthew Vanderpool trying to get caught up. This is back in that crash room still on the ground has still not gotten well, up yet Bob this is Chris Froome of the comeback man two years ago a terrible crash took him out well he wasn't able to start the Tour de France two years ago he made his comeback this year the four-time winner of the tour wasn't expected to be a contender overall but he was back and he's in trouble could be decisive for Peter Sagan's chances at success there he is on the front whoa now we have a crash towards the back Oh, goodness me. Well, this is Group Armour, and they're the lead-out team for Arno de Meur. And, in fact, this is Madwas. He's a local boy, too, Valentin Madwas. He's a, a Breton. And that's not what he wanted to finish today's stage of the Tour de France. Second tour for him. Well, the crash is near the back, judging by the length of the line here. That split the field at the back. But look at the pace now at the bob. At the front of this race, Team DSM, a bit of a surprise here. But they're driving for Case Ball, and they're breaking up the rhythm of the Lotto team for Kaylee Buen. Tish Benut on the front, named after Tish Inohosa, the Texan singer-songwriter. His parents were big fans on his wheel, Lotto Rider. One of the lead-out men for Caleb Buen. But on the right-hand side, you can see that. Here it is again. Valentin Madwa going down. He's been doing a lot of the work for his sprinter, Arnaud Demar, and just trying to get safely to the finish line and a touch of wheels. At this speed, you go down quickly. Well, thank heavens they possibly went into the grass a little bit there. But they just probably got pushed out of the way because these roads are extremely now. This is now a danger which will exist all the way to the finish. Six and a half miles to go. Visibly speeding over the ground here. In excess of 35, approaching 40 miles an hour right now. And still, they can't pull these boys back. It's 26 seconds. We don't really, we're not giving you enough appreciation of the speed of this breakaway today, Bob. Oh, they have really been going well the last 30 kilometers or so. Right when Ida Schelling went back to the field, they decided to put the hammer down in the breakaway. And Nobody's been sitting on, nobody's been playing any tactical games at all. 
and that's given them a chance to stay ahead a little bit. And another problem here. Oh, no. Jumbo Visma. That is Primos Roglic. Torn to shreds, Phil. Oh, a disaster for Primos Roglic. And nine kilometers from the finish, he can't take advantage of the rule, which is three kilometers to go. So Roglic with his hands on his knees there. This is a serious, serious time loss here. Oh. Six miles out from the finish, he's got to get going. He's, it's a real time loss, and he's going to have to... Half his team would seem to be down with him. Roglic is away, his shorts badly ripped. He's a little bit stunned. Other teammates are on the bikes as well. And this is a chaser. Keep on the right-hand side. There he goes. Oh, that was a nasty fall. I mean, Roglic and going that down. That wasn't Roglic there. Yeah, that was. Roglic was behind it. Was that Roglic? That was Primoz Roglic hitting the deck. Yes, absolutely. Ooh, that was a heavy fall onto his buttocks there. That really was. And I that is a long chase back at high speed, Bob. He'll be lucky to rejoin the race. As we catch up now with the action again, there he is, Roglic, where's number 11? We'll see what the official... always given to the rider who finished second in the Tour last year. We'll see what the officials do with the cars. If the team cars are allowed to stay in formation behind the peloton, that will be Roglic's only chance, really, to catch back on to the field before the finish line. Only five miles left. Meanwhile, at the front, Ineos and Lotto and Matthew Vanderpoel He's going to be doing the big lead out for Tim Merlier, hoping to keep his sprinter in position. He's done that and more with two Ks to go. This is an amazing Tour de France, but these riders now are still fighting for the stage win. It's the yellow jersey himself. He's a powerful man. He is not unknown at winning a sprint, but we don't see him, Matthew van der Poel, as a sprinter. He's got other good sprinters on his squad, but his speed, the way he's ripping this race apart, these boys are having a real job in keeping up with the Mayo Jean at the moment. But Kaylee Buren uh, with his style, is right there, the diminutive character, right in the middle of our picture. And in Ineos are staying out of trouble by riding at the front as well. And look at the size of the peloton, Bob. It's been blown apart. It has done. 1.5 kilometers to go now. Dead straight to the finish line. Matthew Vanderpool in the yellow jersey doing the lead out for Tim Merlier. He's fourth in that line of Alpacine riders with two Ineos men in between himself and his sprinter. And then queued up behind them is the De Kunic squad and the DSM team of Case Bowl. Also there, Nasser Buhani in the red jersey in the white helmet. Also looking for a big result here today. You say it's a lead out, which it is, but Matthew van der Poel is so strong, he keeps opening a gap on the rest of the race, and it wouldn't put him, we're under one kilometre to go now. Matthew van der Poel has finally dropped off the pace here at the moment, but his teammates have taken it up, as you say, Bob, for Melier. But there's also Nasser Buani, he's got the beard in the red and white jersey. Caleb Ewan is still here. I haven't seen Mark Cavendish come into view at the moment. May have had his rhythm disturbed by that race, by the crashes. Case Bowl, seventh in line. Buhan is there. Here comes Sagan moving up, trying to get himself into position. Well, it is a perfect race for the bumping and barring of Peter Sagan. It's his sort of finish. Uh, Buwani in the red on the on the right of our picture. Sagan is in the white. Sagan, look at the way he's pushing his way through here. He's trying to get on turns. I'm not sure he can do this as he races up towards the line. We're looking here at uh, Zan, at um, Phillips and Jasper Phillips and still got the front. Is he going to get oh! the sprint win? He's going to. Oh, and Sagan's gone down. With Ewan. And he's got. And with the Ewan, the Caleb Ewan has gone down. I think the winner is Jasper Philipson, but we'll see if it comes over the line. I'm not sure who it was, but I think it was Jasper Philipson, and that is a tragic finish for Caleb Ewan, who is left on the road there with a collision with Peter Sagan. We'll have to look what happened there. My eyes were at the front of the race as the peloton still comes to... This was an absolute carnage on the finish po over those last few miles. Pogaccia just hitting the line. Long ways down from the sprinters. Oh, my goodness. Well, Pogac has lost time as well, and, and so Roglic. has, of course, uh, Roglic. It might be Tim Malia who's come in. That was the team of the yellow jersey who put in a terrific turn to rip the field apart. There's the slip, and it was Ewan himself. He seemed to pull his bike wheel off the road in the sprint, took out Peter Sagan at the same time.
Well, it all went wrong too for Mark Cavendish. He didn't make the final decision there because of all the problems along the road. But that was, it was a race for the sprinters and it was a sprinter who won. But that's about all you can say. That was a rough ride to the finish for everybody. It's going to be really interesting to see who does go for this. And uh, that will tell us a lot about today's stage. Oh, no, a crash at the back. Mads Pedersen, number 45, is down from Trek. And he's one of the sprinters and favorite for the stage. And looking yeah, like Jules, to, Julien Simon as well. To be in some serious amount of pain. Oh, right on his. Ouch. On the right the hip, right just pow. There. Simon Yates also tangled up there from the bike exchange squad in the white and black and turquoise jersey. Well, well Mads Petson, the world champion, trying to straighten out his bike here at the moment. He just cannot lose any, any form of vigilance in that pack in the Tour de France. They're riding into a slight headwind, occasionally switches to the cross when they go around bends, of course, like that ahead of them. This is... Uh, just trying to get his bike sorted out is Julien Simon. Oh! Welcome back to the heat of the Tour de France. This is Seb Kuss here, who's just crashed on the side of the road as we return to the pictures. And he's taken a nasty hit on the face. That is a horrible fall. Look at the side of him. Oh! Oh! Tony Martin. Oh, it's Tony Martin again. Yes. The, that's so terrible, Phil. Ah. Oh. He was the one that we will recall on stage one that hit that uh, cardboard banner being held up by the spectator, which brought out a lot of riders in the field. Don't, don't imagine his wounds have healed yet from that big crash on stage one. Doing the concussion protocol, it looks like. Yes, the doctor is checking in there for a little concussion, putting the fingers up. But he's just landed on his right side and his face. He's so unlucky. This happened so much to Tony Martin in this Tour de France over the years. Remember in Cherbourg, he crashed out once when he was wearing the yellow jersey with a broken collarbone in sight of the finishing line. Meanwhile, on the left of the picture there, the polka dot leader's jersey and the king of the mountains is Nairo Quintana, and the other rider wears the world champion's jersey of Julien Alaphilippe. They got clear of the field, and they're racing for the first climb of the day. Only the winner gets points. And while we see this very, very sad sight, Jumbo Visma has had a horrible Tour de France so far. They've lost Roglic, their leader, and Tony Martin. He's spending a long time by the roadside, Bob, and the time is ticking. Don't think we'll see Tony Martin remounting at this point if he was able to, realizing that the breakaway is not established and the peloton is already averaged 53 kilometers an hour, over 30 miles an hour in the opening miles. Um, oh, just gone from horrible to even worse, if that's imaginable, for Tony Martin in this year's Tour de France. Yes, and if he were to retire, that's three of his eight-man team out of the race now. Twelve seconds, the gap back to the main pack. We're trying to chase down on two significant riders in this Tour de France. Julien Alaphilippe, no daylight behind. Just one rider, I think, possibly in our vision in the distance there. Nairo Quintana refining himself, and I'm amazed. He's not just chasing this single point up the road, Bob. They are planning a long-term escape here what? because we have over, we've over. we got 42 points at stake for the King of the Mountains today. And Nairo and Julian definitely in for the stage. Well, and Tony Martin, they've got the stretcher to load up the ambulance ready. So uh, I think Tony Martin's Tour de France is about to end. Very, very sad indeed. And I think uh, Steven Kreisweig is also chasing behind these two riders at the moment. Let's see if we can check in with Steve Perino. Well, Phil, uh, I know you brought up the concussion protocol, and it perhaps it's a moot point given the condition that Tony Martin seems to be in. But there is a new protocol that's been instituted for this Tour de France where 
Florence Pommier is the one as the lead medical, and she tries to first do a balance test with the athletes, but because of the urgency to get them back in the field, because, of course, the Tour de France doesn't wait, they will then mandate that they have to come back to the convertible car and go through two more percussion, uh, concussion protocols where she asks them questions, their birthday, what day is it, give them 10 words to remember and repeat them back. So they're trying to do more to prevent these athletes from pushing on in conditions where they should not, because we know these athletes will push on at almost any instance. Yes, you're absolutely right, Steve. Uh, giving up is the last thing in their minds, of course. Uh, but looking at these pictures on our television right now, Tony Martin sat in the grass. The doctors are in attendance, including the lady you mentioned. She's there. And uh, the helmet is off. The stretcher is out. I'm afraid the signs are all there that this is the end of the Tour de France for Tony. And that is a very sad sight, Bob. Terrible to see Tony Martin being... Injured again, and this time not able to. Oh, at least he's up and about, so be attended to, and that's the end of the Tour de France for Tony Martin. Very sad to see him exit this way. Well, Radio Tour has just announced that it is official that uh, Tony Martin has abandoned the Tour de France today. This is the 13th stage of the Tour de France. We're racing today from Nîmes to Cocassonne. Massive distance of 137 miles. And live action here on NBCSN, brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. And I must say, Bob, we have seen some race today. Let's check in with Adam Bly. They must be travelling at about... Oh, there's a crash. No, look at this on a sweeping left-hander. A multi-pilot. This is the dangers again. There's one or two riders down in the ditch from Trek Segafredo there. Just have a look top right of your picture. These are the roads, don't forget, that Steve Perino told us how narrow they would become about... Uh, 13 miles from the finish. That's a nasty fall, Bob. That's a nasty fall. That is a high speed and bad pavement and big. Fairly near to the front also. Rider going off the side and just going down so hard well, right there. That is absolutely horror. Tim de Klerk is might be the rider from de Kunick, the bottom of that. And uh, there is de Klerk right there in the dark blue jersey. Yeah, that is really sad. Tim de Klerk, the real workhorse, the power man of this team, uh, pacing the race today for Mark Cavendish. Don't know what happened. Word about it. Must have dropped back into the peloton, Tim, there. And let's see if we can get some more update on this from Adam Blythe. In front of it now, Phil, you can just see all the riders. There's a little cliff that goes off the side here, and a lot of riders have gone down the side, but the road just on the outside of this corner, it's just like a gravel pit. So it's deep in gravel, you can see a lot of riders, it's very, very rough surfing, it is not a pleasant one, it is. I'm surprised there was no markings on the road for these riders because a lot of them have gone off the side. Tim de Klerk here, they're searching to try and get a rider. There's mechanics going down the other side of this, trying to get riders up from the bottom of the cliff, but you can see Rafa Micah from the UAE team just bent over his bike. Roger Kluger back there has really opened half of his back up, so these riders an unexpected crash really on such a stupid bit of road where you've just got gravel at the side of the road you've got Simon Yates just laying down next to me as well now so it is it's an awful situation here Luke Durbridge I still think they're trying to pull riders up from the bottom of it Tim de Klerk who was right at the front of the peloton is just here he's stood back up he looks to be okay but they are still Craig pulling Anderson bikes out of it here out from the from the ditch Rafael yeah, Meyer. Craig Anderson. Anderson. Um, yeah, I think um, Adam will be sent away by the race referees here. But Soren Craig Anderson is the rider who has climbed up, and it's good to see Tim de Klerk is up. But of course, the race has gone by some minutes now. Now let me just see that. That is that is Yates for sure there. Simon Yates. Well. 
this is so unexpected at this stage, on this type of stage, but you know, there's absolutely no protection there against them slipping into the side there. Steve Perino was on it there when he, he said how narrow it was. The racing is full on here now because this is Wout van Aert driving at the front here, the champion of Belgium. And he's joined by the Lotte Sudal riders. There are still some, quite a few riders left from uh, Koenig Quickstep in the blue jersey. He's trying to control it. Cavendish is on the right, Bob. And he stayed out of trouble on that one, but I bet they've breathed a few sighs of relief. Soren Krog Anderson from the DSM squad down in that ravine. Long time to get up. And Simon Yates from the Bike Exchange squad, 178. Very slowly to get up, but a lot of aggressive riding in the front. It looks like there's a split in the field also because of that. So the AG2R squad, De Kunik has been in the counter moves each time somebody's tried to attack. And the last one was a very ominously was Wout Van Aert. So don't think that the breakaway has been caught, but they might have been because the peloton going so quickly. That's Sylvain Delia in the red jersey for the Alpacine squad. And trying to get across is Tom Skoyens in the Latvian national champions jersey trying to get across to this counter move might be Rui Costa with him there is Simon Yates well thankfully he's back on his bike and back going again when it looked questionable that's another bike exchange rider so that must have, must have happened near that team Phil yes it, it looks like it now this is not looking good this is Simon Yates here he's stretching his bike but they're going to put a bottle of fresh a bottles, drink on yeah. it and get him away He's clearly holding this, his left side there, so he's obviously in pain, but he's going to give it a go. Well, the pack are closing in. There's uh, Colbelli's the green jersey on the left here. Again, Mark Cavendish isn't bothering with his engine sprints, but it's too late now, and one oh, right on the line. I think it was, uh, it was Sparagalelli who got that, I think, and uh, Michael Matthews has come over the line. He will be in uh, sixth or seventh place. So he's got points there, which he wanted. He lies second in that competition. As we go through the sprint points here, Lavalone. Crash. Problem, oh, dear me. That has been a bit of a tumble, to say the least, here. And this is rather sad, Bob, because we're looking here at uh, Stefan Beisegger. He's been off the back of the group on those descents today. He doesn't seem to like going downhill, but now he's fallen on a comparatively flat road. And what a fall, Bob. His racing strip is completely ripped to pieces. I think that was just before or after the sprint point, Phil, when Wiesiger came to grief. Quick bike change. Shouldn't be too far behind the group, but they are absolutely flying, hammering away. There's already a group being dropped off the back, including the Clerk, Buhani, Case Bowl, and Amon Janssen. Five Ks to go. And the breakaway is starting to get established, so no control of the peloton. In the left-hand side, off the road, that's Brent Van Moore. And start, instead of pushing forward, Brent, how about hit the brakes? You have two of them, use them. And it just creates this huge bottleneck and big pileup with a lot of the biggest names in the Tour de France caught up in it. Then at 199 to go, there was an attack at the front while all of those riders were trying to catch up at the back and the, there was an attack by Kwiatkowski just behind uh, screens here in our pictures and up comes the yellow jersey saying, hey, I've got teammates delayed in the crash, you have, now stop attacking and let's get back into the pack. And that's exactly what happened. The yellow jersey this year, Bob, really is a patron of the Tour de France. And I think we've got a crash away, break away from that because we've got yet another crash, Bob, on the open road. And it's dead straight road Cavendish, as well. Cavendish is in there, Phil. You can see Cavendish in the center of the picture there, getting it himself back and going again. Another gigantic pile up. Uh, just, uh, just, it seems like every crash closes the road and involves half the peloton each time. Cobrelli is there as well. I would imagine Enrique Moss is there because a couple of his teammates from the Movistar squad. There is Enrique Moss, or excuse me, that. There is Enrique Moss, yes. Right there, Cobrelli in the green, white, and red. DSM, and this is a wild scramble for the mechanics now. Also. Leo Martin as well, Bob. Yeah, in the red and white, in the middle of his two teammates. I would imagine they neutralize Again, the front of the race. 
and the team that's been pulling, Alpacine will ease up, wait for all of these riders to catch back into the peloton. Didn't see exactly what caused this, uh, but the pressure to move up, to stay at the front is just relentless. So this is very close to the front also. Inattention, touch of wheels, so tired. It's hard to even hammer the brakes enough to slow down at times. So riders just piling into that and it's, uh, it's difficult to speculate on how it happened. There's Cobrelli and Gil Martin, by the way, eighth in the overall standings, trying to get back on terms. Also Balladini from the Quickstep squad in the blue jersey there. Well, let's just check in with Adam Blythe, Bob, and see if Adam has seen anything. Adam.